Hello and welcome to theCUBE from the New York Stock Exchange office in San Francisco. My name is Christoph Bertrand, I'm a principal analyst at theCUBE Research. I am joined today by Nick Otto, who is the head of global partnerships at IBM. We're going to be talking about, guess what, the partnership between IBM and Salesforce. Dreamforce 2024, um, great uh, uh, intro this morning, um, lots of people. San Francisco is absolutely crazy downtown. Uh, not the usual crazy, good crazy this time. <laughs> this being said, I can say that I'm from San Francisco. So Nick, uh, welcome to theCUBE, or welcome back, I should say. Thank you, excited to be here. Great, so let's talk about the partnership. Um, what are the, the main areas in, uh, or technology areas uh, where you actually partner uh, with Salesforce? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you just kind of hit on the fact that everything that was talked about this morning from Mark uh, it was really exciting that IBM was a part of pretty much every element. Um, and I think that's really just building upon a significant relationship we've had with Salesforce for quite some time. They've been a strategic partner of ours for, for years. Really what this is all about is, as is most these days, AI. Uh, back at IBM it's Think surprise, earlier this year, uh, we announced a lot of new collaboration with Salesforce. And really everything that we've talked about here is just taking that all to the next level and continuing to help with our customer transformations. Absolutely, is it a dream force or agent force? I mean, they <laughs> think Mark suggested to change the name uh, himself. Well, let's talk about something I never thought I could say in the same sentence and sound credible, which is mainframe, DB2, AI, and Salesforce. What's going on with that? That's uh, very true and, and it's really exciting to me. I, I think. And, and Mark talked about this in his keynote today, but I'll kind of give my simplified version of each of those different pieces. Uh, you know, one of the things that IBM has really been focused on for several years now, we've been very consistent around this, is the, the priorities around hybrid cloud and AI. That's what our clients need to transform. I think, you know, Mark today kind of walked through the history from cloud to mobile to AI to data and then getting to where they are with agents today. That's very aligned with our mission and our strategy for years around hybrid cloud and AI. Hybrid cloud, to your point, there's lots of data, lots of different places. And I think when you look at any generative AI continuum, it starts with the data. How do we make sure that as you're drawing insights, you have access to all of the relevant data? We announced back at IBM Think earlier this year, a collaboration around zero copy data network with Salesforce. That was bringing WatsonX.data and Salesforce Data Cloud together. What we've announced here is the extension of that to include IBM DataGate. What DataGate allows you to do is bring Z data into WatsonX.data, which then, through the connection with Salesforce Data Cloud, can really bring insights from a transactional perspective. Running on mainframe, WatsonX.data also works with DB2 and, and you know, pretty much everything that you can imagine out there. So when you think about that hybrid cloud element, getting the, that data available to draw insights from is really foundational, and now being able to connect that to Salesforce Data Cloud is yet another way to draw even faster insights, for, especially from a sales perspective. Now, I have to say this is a very impressive integration. Um, mainframe will never die, let's be clear. But I think what you're demonstrating here is that it's really this notion of hybrid, but more importantly, uh, the idea that data is very pervasive. It's not just in Salesforce, it's really across the enterprise. So could you walk me through maybe for this specific example, the type of use cases, or maybe if you have some customer examples, uh, I'm, I'm very curious about this because yep. again, mainframe DB2, Lots of data connected to the Salesforce environment. Now you, you've got a powerhouse going that right there, right? Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I think you're right. I mean, what's really exciting to me, I've been at IBM for almost 20 years now, this notion of hybrid cloud and, and data being pervasive and disparate spread across your organization. Obviously you have clouds, you have on-prem data, you probably are working in most clouds, you've got lots of ISVs involved. Getting all of that to that data into a format or into a platform where you can draw insights from it is so important. And I think you know most of the, the use cases that we're working with Salesforce on today are focused around the customer and particularly transactions around that customer. Right. I think exa exactly as you said, I mean, the, the mainframe continues to be an incredibly pervasive platform. Mm -hmm. I think the latest stat is 45 of the 50 largest banks in the world are running on Z. Uh, that, that's pretty pervasive. And if you think about being able to bring that transactional level data to life in a broader sales transformation or even lead generation campaign for a seller, where not just are you looking at 
you know, data spread across all of your different systems of records on-prem, on-cloud, everywhere else, but also that transactional data, bringing that to life in near real time can draw an, an entirely new set of insights for that seller to go do something different than they would have done otherwise. Yeah, especially at mainframe speed, so. That's right. <laughs> uh, something not to forget, we talk a lot about a uh, AI, uh, certainly there is a lot of agentic AI uh, going on right now, lots of conversations about this. So let's walk through what you've done in collaboration with Salesforce around Watson X and other agents. And I'm very interested in also in the Granite, um, you know, uh, efforts. Yeah, oh, perfect. So I, I think, you know, we kind of focused on data to begin with and what we've done around dot data, data cloud, and, and pulling it data gate into that to allow all of that extension. Once you have that foundation, to your point, then you want to draw insights. And, and the insights really comes from a lot of different models being built by a lot of different platforms. We believe the Granite models are a, a really, really enterprise ready model. Uh, we, we believe they're fit for purpose. You can see we have a large set of them. What makes them really differentiated is the fact that they're all indemnified. So our models actually come with indemnification, which for the enterprise user is becoming really important. So those insights actually are backed by indemnification. That's point one. Uh, kind of building upon that exactly where you were going with the agent world, there's too many, I, I think, projects going on across all of our customers. I, I'm sure many people have seen across their customers where you're just trying to do something with generative AI. Um, it's a great finding, a great insight. Let me show you a cool use case that we developed. If you're not driving different outcomes at the end of the day, that value is not going to land. And so what we've done with watsonx.orchestrate in collaboration with Agent Force, we've been on this being able to get your insights and then drive different outcomes. And that's all around automation and orchestration, which has been a focus of ours for quite some time. Now collaborating with Salesforce, bringing together Agent Force and WatsonX.Orchestrate is really unlocking that value to make sure that different actions are taken and not just you got to need insight that, you know, that, that was kind of fun, but you're actually now driving autonomous activity off of those insights. And that's where our collaboration just continues with WatsonX.Orchestrate and Agent Force coming together. Our WatsonX.Orchestrate um, skills and actions coming into the portfolio of Agent Force actions and then finally, delivering all of that through a medium. And that medium, in, in many of our internal use cases, is Slack. So you really see like all of these different Salesforce and IBM and other partner assets all coming together into a single continuum. Yeah, it seems like the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Uh, let's talk about some of the typical workflows that, that you've already automated or orchestrated with this integration. Do you have a couple of examples? Yeah, the, the, the cleanest and clearest example is still focused. I mean, we've really zoomed into regulated industries, first of right. all, um, back all right. to kind of the mainframe estate. You look at financial services, you look at telco, uh, some of those industries where that transactional volume and the speed of that transactional volume is really important. Connecting in those use cases and those industries into what we're doing with Salesforce was kind of point one. And then when you start to look at the spaces that we want to collaborate, the very first one, obviously, given Salesforce's expertise and everything they do with Sales Cloud is the seller. How do we help get the seller better insights around um, churn? How do we get them better insights around cross-sell, upsell? What are those transactional activities happening right in the transactional system? And how can that then drive different outcomes and, and different agent actions to kind of drive a whole new continuum? much faster with access to data that we never would have had access to otherwise. No, it makes a lot of sense. So that's accelerating sales cycles, potentially, um, hopefully augmenting the, yep. the, the average uh, sales. Sales training comes up often, Sa exactly. Well, exactly, sales enablement was gonna be my, my next question. But before we go there, I'd like to know, obviously you're dealing with a lot of data here um, from many sources. How do you keep this data compliant? What type of mechanisms have you put in place? Uh, because, you know, if you're just at the receiving end, you may not know that some data should not be used or, or reused. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a, it's a great question. I think it's really foundational to the approach IBM has taken on this space from the beginning. Uh, when we launched Watson X last year now, um, it, there's three foundational elements. There's dot .data, which we've talked a lot about mm -hmm. today, uh, around getting access to all those different data sources. There's dot .ai, which is really that, that platform where you can come in and work through that the AI insights that you're trying to derive, as well as where our granite models reside. And then dot governance, to your point, that to us is the part and to our clients is the part that gets the most attention by far. Because at the end of the day, you can get the best insights, you can go drive some, you know, different autonomous actions off of it. But it's not if it's not properly governed, if you're not accessing the right data with the right controls, right. if you're not controlling for 
all of the things Mark talked about today around bias and being able to ensure that you have trustworthy AI data, that outcome that comes out the back end really doesn't matter. And, and it's the first question all of our customers are asking us today. So anytime we engage with the customer on this entire space, where we start the discussion is usually around governance. It makes a lot of sense. Plus, you've um, mentioned the banking industry where well, maybe governance is important. A little bit of <laughs> governance, uh, but pretty much every industry has, especially in the enterprise, has a ton of governance um, between national uh, or transnational type of compliance regulations as well as uh, industry uh, related regulations. Are there some verticals you're targeting with this partnership? Is there a priority list? Where do you think uh, the business will come from originally or what is it coming from today? Yeah, no, I, as we talked about earlier, I mean, the, the three industries that we're seeing the most interest out of the gate, uh, n not to be confused with DataGate, but uh, <laughs> at the beginning here is financial services, right. for sure, which is interesting sitting in the New, New York, York Stock Exchange exactly. building. Yeah. But that's absolutely a space where we're seeing tremendous interest from, from the customer side. The other is telco. Um, our, our telco relationships that both IBM and Salesforce have together really bring this to life, and also the, the mainframe estate that exists there uh, is key. Uh, and then, you know, kind of any other regulated industry where you have complex data requirements, uh, complex data government governance needs, bringing that to life and being able to pull that out through the Salesforce transformation project that you're driving is where we're starting all of that initial agent force work. So that's covering quite a bit of the economy right there. Um, <laughs> you haven't mentioned airlines, but, but yep. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I would love some agents <laughs> with, with. I think everyone would, yeah. Yes, with airlines <laughs> for all sorts of reasons. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the future. So what are you going to be doing next? Uh, and maybe put this in a context also of your channel partners and your services partners and your own organizations. How are you deploying this? Uh, moving forward, how are you going to make the uh, combination more pervasive beyond the original three? Yeah, no, great, uh, great question. I, I think first of all, like you know, one of the key elements, if you think about Mark's presentation today when he kind of started to talk about Agent Force, there was four different types of partners. Uh, the first was agent partners. Um, we're collaborating very closely to build, co-create some of these new agents together. The second was an action partner. I mentioned Watson X dot orchestrate and the thousand plus skills slash actions we have in that portfolio that we're going to pull into Agent Force. Uh, the third was all around zero copy data and, and making sure that we have access to all of this data. And then to your point, across the bottom was implementation partners. Right. Those implementation partners, we obviously with the IBM consulting team, very large, significant Salesforce practice doing great transformation work really prioritizing this agent force space because a lot of our customers are looking to do work in that area. However, we're not stopping there. I mean, a lot of the collaboration that we're driving with IBM right now is really opening up to the entire ecosystem, working with other GSIs out there, making sure that there's a full understanding of the differentiation that comes from our product set and how that coincides with the Salesforce product set. And so I, I think you'll see more and more as we look forward the unlocking of that ecosystem. We, we give a lot of signals of this on a, on a regular basis at IBM Think earlier this year. We announced a lot of new partners, a lot of expansion to our partners area. The IBM ecosystem is growing at rates it never has before, which is really exciting. And I think activities like this, what we're doing with our most strategic partners, just further unlocks that opportunity for the long list of service partners as well as technology partners. Mm -hmm. Within my portfolio, I also have the AWS relationship. We're seeing a lot of synergies between right. what we're doing with Salesforce, what we're doing with AWS, some of the other discussions you've had here today, really pulling all of those things together unlocks, I think, incredibly uh, an incredible new set of value for the end customer. Right, so let's talk about the requirements in terms of skill sets. Now, enablement obviously is not to be taken lightly. Right. So are you or have you created specific certifications where I could be this sort of Watson X, Salesforce, Agent Force certified architect or specialist? Is that something you're doing? The consulting team is absolutely launching an entire track around that. I think on our side today, you know, we have Watson X certifications and there's Agent Force certifications coming. I think we need to work together on what that intersection looks like. And I think that'll really be brought to life by what, what the customers need. Uh, so we'll, we'll be right. fostering and curating those as, as we move forward together. Well, I mean, we've covered a lot of ground, and uh, before we um, we close, what recommendations would you have now if you think about end users, because I'm sure you spend a lot of time in the field as well with end users, what recommendations would you have in order for them to be successful with their next project? Because you mentioned that AI, well, everybody's doing something, but yep. are they really doing anything? Well, clearly some people are. So what recommendations do you have? What should they do um, if you engage with leaders of these end users? What 
is the first thing you should think about? What is the second thing you should think about? <laughs> I'll do first and second. That sounds good. Uh, the first thing that, that I, I encourage every one of my customers to think about is back to the first point that I made, which is value. Like, why are you doing this? What are the KPIs that you're looking to, to improve? What, what's the actual outcomes you're looking for? Whether that's agent force related and actually deploying agents, increasing productivity, or are there other insights you're looking to get that you're going to be able to quantify? I think that right from the beginning, understand what is the thing that I'm trying to improve is something that unfortunately today, the vast majority of projects don't start with. They start with, we have a huge problem here. We're going to go do a bunch of experiments to see if we can make it better versus here's the specific right. KPIs we're going to go out and try and improve. The second goes to your last question, which is how can I do this? And what should I be thinking about as I go into this project? I think first of all, is you're probably going to need help. Uh, these are incredibly complex things to solve. So whether it's just help to figure out what is that problem you're trying to solve, what are the KPIs you're going to go after, or the entire ecosystem of help that can be there. And that can include, you know, I've got cloud partners that you know, we've got data spread across multiple clouds. That can include, you know, an ISV partner like a Salesforce. We're all in on that platform. That can include a long list of ISV partners, most likely services partners. And where we like to kind of come and help solve that is to wire those things together. So everything I talked about from a WatsonX.data perspective, a, a key differentiator around that is your data can exist anywhere. On-prem, on whatever cloud it is, uh, we will pull that together and help you draw insights. Then the layer on top of that, WatsonX.ai, you can draw insights using not just our granite models, but partner models. Right. Partner models can come in, doing that in an open way is absolutely fundamental. And then finally, the governance piece. Like, don't forget about governance. Like, you can start with value, but the very second thing you should think about is governance and how am I going to make sure that I'm doing this all in a way that follows the regulations and needs and requirements of my business, my enterprise, my market. You know, I think those are the important pieces. And, and the fact that you can't do it alone uh, is probably one of right. the most important that too many of our customers have tried it on their own. And then they come and ask for help. But th those are a few, a few quick thoughts. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Nick. This was great. I would like to thank everybody uh, for watching uh, The Cube. We're here at the New York Stock Exchange office uh, in San Francisco covering Dreamforce 2024. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.